When it comes to achieving success, there's one skill that stands head and shoulders above the rest, and that's the art of persuasion. It's the ability to move people in a direction that inspires action, influences decisions, and changes lives. Now, don't mistake persuasion for manipulation. Manipulation is trying to force someone to your point of view for your benefit alone. Persuasion, on the other hand, is about finding common ground and working together toward a shared goal. It's about creating a win-win situation where everyone involved sees value. So how does one master this skill of persuasion? Like any art form, it requires practice, a keen understanding of human nature, and a commitment to developing the right techniques. The good news is that anyone can learn it. The better news is that once mastered, it can change the entire course of your life. So let's explore some foundational principles of persuasion presented in a way that captures the essence of this skill as I've come to understand it. To truly earn the title of a persuader, it's not just about delivering a captivating presentation, it's about inspiring action. You see, when results start to show, when people are moved to do something because of what you said, when your words stir them to take that next step, then you can say you've reached the level of a real persuader. Back when I first got into sales, I thought I was doing pretty well. My mentor had trained me effectively, and I became quite a skilled presenter. People would tell me, you know, I've listened to a lot of salespeople, but you're one of the best. I thought, well, I must be doing something right. Others would say, I've heard a lot of pitches, but you, you're the greatest I've ever come across. It felt like I had cracked the code. But then reality hit. One day it dawned on me. If I was one of the world's greatest salesmen, why weren't people buying as often as I thought they should? It became clear that I had mastered the art of presenting, but persuasion, that was still a skill I needed to cultivate. And that's the key I want to share with you today. Presenting is only half the battle. Persuading is what seals the deal. Now, how do you become an exceptional persuader? It starts with becoming a great storyteller. If you're involved in a business that deals with numbers, figures, and volumes of transactions, it's easy to get caught up in the metrics. You might say, we did $10 million in business last month. But if you leave it at that, you've missed the heart of the matter. The real question is, how many stories are wrapped up in that $10 million? Who were the people involved? What lives were impacted? To truly connect and persuade, you've got to be story conscious, not just number conscious. It's not just about the dollars and cents. It's about the people behind those figures. Learn to translate the activities, the successes, and even the setbacks into stories that resonate with your audience. If you focus solely on the numbers, you'll limit your ability to connect and thus your future in the art of persuasion. Here's another important element. Become your own best storyteller. That means learning to share your journey, your struggles, your insights. Whether you're explaining how you overcame a challenge, presenting a solution, or simply connecting with others on a personal level, your story matters. And the key to sharing it effectively is to reflect on it regularly. Reflection is the practice of extracting value from your experiences, and it's essential for growth. At the end of each day, take a few moments to run through the events of your day. Ask yourself, who did I meet? What did I learn? Why did this happen the way it did? It's what I call running the tapes. When you do this, you give that day a greater significance in your personal development. It becomes an asset you can draw upon in the future. But don't stop there. Dedicate a little more time at the end of the week to review what happened. A week is a substantial period full of lessons, encounters, and decisions. Go over the highs and lows, the successes and mistakes. This kind of weekly reflection solidifies your experiences and allows you to extract even more value from them. And then at the end of the month, set aside half a day to go back over the previous 30 days. Think of a month as a well-rounded chapter in your life filled with moments worth analyzing. Just as businesses wouldn't go a month without reviewing their performance, neither should you. This kind of consistent reflection helps you lock in the wisdom of your past experiences, preparing you to move forward with greater clarity and persuasion. Remember, to become truly effective in your communication, you must not only present information, but persuade others through stories that touch hearts and inspire action. That's when you know you're not just a presenter, but a true persuader. You can't afford to be casual when it comes to taking a look at your life or your business. Some people say, oh, we'll just let the company go a few years, then we'll take a look. But that's far too risky. Waiting that long to assess your progress would be like sailing without a compass you could drift so far off course that by the time you realize it, it might be too late to get back on track. So here's my suggestion. Don't let more than 30 days go by without taking a serious look at where you are, what you've achieved, and how you've grown. 
By doing this consistently, every 30-day period will hold greater significance and serve as a stepping stone toward your goals. Now, when the end of the year rolls around, take a weekend to reflect, really reflect on what you've done and where you're headed. I call it time to reflect. Why is this so important? Because reflection is what makes your past more valuable. It's how experiences transform from mere memories into assets that can be invested in the future. It's a way of turning your personal history into a kind of currency that you can spend wisely in the days ahead. Why go to the trouble of making the past more valuable? It's simple, to invest it in your future. You see, your past is like a vast storehouse filled with lessons, insights and stories just waiting to be uncovered. Let me challenge you to dig deeper into your own history and gather up more of those experiences. The more of your past you can reflect on and understand, the more you can bring to the table in future conversations, decisions, and opportunities. Now, the art of persuasion starting with storytelling. Stories are the real essence of life. They give flesh to facts and bring philosophy to life. There's no better way to illustrate your points than by drawing from the stories of your own life, as well as the stories of others. But remember, stories aren't enough. The next step is accuracy. You have to deal in truth, what we call dealing in facts. This builds credibility, and credibility is the foundation of persuasion. If you mess around with the facts or stretch the truth, you undermine the very foundation you're trying to build. People will forgive an honest mistake, but if you exaggerate or distort the truth, you risk losing the trust you've worked so hard to establish. It's like being on the witness stand if you're caught in one lie. Everything else you say is suddenly in question. That's how fragile credibility can be. So aim for what I call true sophistication, which is the total absence of exaggeration. There's no need for it. If you feel the urge to embellish, it's often because you're trying to compensate for a lack of self-confidence or substance. But when you build character, when you strengthen your confidence, you'll find that the truth in its purest form is powerful enough. In fact, if you're dealing with people, here's a valuable tip. Let them discover that it was better than you promised, that it was easier than you said it would be. Trust the truth. It's liberating. If the truth isn't enough to persuade someone, then it's time for you to become stronger, not the story. Another key to persuasion is learning to borrow from others. If someone has said something exceptionally well, don't hesitate to borrow their words. It shows that you're well-read, that you've done your homework, and that you're genuinely passionate about your subject. I borrowed countless ideas and phrases from my mentors and other great thinkers. When Winston Churchill said, the truth is incontrovertible, malice may attack it, ignorance may deride it, but in the end, there it is, he captured something profound in a few short words. Why reinvent the wheel when you can borrow that brilliance? So gather up the words, the stories, and the insights from others that resonate with you and use them to support your message. At the same time, work on crafting your own expressions that are equally powerful. But when needed, reach out and borrow the wisdom that's already been articulated and use it to elevate your own communication. This is how you blend your voice with the voices of others to create a symphony of persuasion. Remember the path to mastery and persuasion is paved with reflection, truth, storytelling, and borrowing the best that has already been said. Make these practices a part of your life and you'll find that not only do you become a better persuader, but you also grow richer in wisdom and stronger in character along the way. When you offer someone a well-spoken thought, a profound idea, you're extending more than just words. You're offering a tool that can touch the heart, stir the soul, mend a problem, and maybe even spark a decision that leads to growth and change. But remember, this isn't an easy task, nor was it ever meant to be. There's a price attached to mastery, and that's exactly why the promise of language holds such immense value. Language is powerful. It's the bridge that connects one mind to another, the force that can heal and transform. But to harness that power, you've got to learn the craft. You've got to go through the process of refining your skills. The art of persuasion, my friends, is no different. One key element in this art is the power of challenge. We all have an innate response to challenge. It's woven into the fabric of who we are. From our earliest years, we've been driven by the question, how high can you jump? How fast can you run? How much can you do? Can you win? The spirit of challenge fuels ambition and stirs the desire for accomplishment. And that's why challenge is an essential part of persuasion that wakes people up to their own potential. Now, I wanna share with you one of the greatest challenges I ever received. It was from my mentor, Mr. Schaff. He said, let's go do it. Notice he didn't just say, you go do it. He didn't simply tell me, go change your life, go be successful, go make the decisions. No, he said, let's go do it. 
those words carried a different weight. It wasn't just advice. It was a call to action, a commitment to walk the path together. He was saying, let's read the extra books. Let's make the right choices. Let's put in the effort for the next six months. Let's give it 110% and see what we can accomplish. There's something truly inspiring about a challenge that includes you in the journey. When someone says, let's go do it, they're not just setting a goal for you. They're setting it for themselves too. It becomes a shared endeavor, a joint mission. It's easy for someone to stand on the sidelines and say, you go do it. That's a hands-off approach. And while it may motivate some, it's nothing compared to the power of let's. The moment someone says, let's, they've committed to being in the trenches with you, to sharing in the victories and the struggles. You see, persuasion isn't just about saying the right words. It's about making a connection that moves people to act. It's about challenging them to go beyond their current limits. And sometimes the most effective way to do that is to join them in the pursuit. You're not just suggesting they make a change. You're offering to change with them. You're not merely asking them to take a step. You're taking that step right alongside them. That's when challenge becomes powerful because it's no longer just a call to action. It's an invitation to growth together. When you master the art of issuing a challenge like that, you begin to see how people light up, how their energy shifts, how they become ready to give more than they thought they had. It's in our nature to rise to a challenge, especially when it's framed as a shared journey. So the next time you aim to persuade, remember to say, let's. Say, let's see what we can achieve if we push ourselves a little harder, if we focus a little more, if we focus a little more, if we give that extra effort. Make it a joint endeavor. But understand, issuing a challenge is just the beginning. You still need to show up and do the work. You've got to read those extra books, put in the hours, make those sacrifices, and push past the moments when you feel like quitting. It's in those moments that the real growth happens. And when you come out on the other side, not only will you have accomplished something significant, but you'll also have strengthened the bond with those who took the challenge with you. And here's the beauty of it. Every time you embrace a challenge, you're not just working toward a goal. You're crafting a story. You're creating experiences that can later be shared to inspire someone else. That's the cycle of growth and persuasion. You take on the challenge, you push through, you learn the lessons, and then you share those stories. And those stories in turn become the fuel for the next challenge, the next person, the next person, the next leap forward. So let's go do it. Let's take the challenge. Let's commit to our growth. Let's see what we can achieve when we pour it on, when we give it everything we've got. Because it's not just about reaching the goal. It's about who we become in the process. It's about the stories we'll be able to tell, the lessons we'll be able to share, and the lives we'll be able to touch along the way. Next, the importance of sincerity. There's an old saying that goes, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. When you're trying to persuade someone, don't make it all about you and your agenda. Make it about them. Make it about their needs, their dreams, and their concerns. Show them that you're not just interested in winning an argument, but you're genuinely interested in helping them improve their lives. Sincerity is something that can't be faked. It shines through in your tone, your body language, and your choice of words. If you genuinely believe in the value of what you're offering, that belief will come across naturally. Persuasion becomes much easier when your message is rooted in authenticity. So before you try to persuade anyone, ask yourself, do I really believe in this? Is this really in their best interest? When your answer to those questions is yes, you'll find that your conviction will do much of the persuading for you. Next is timing and patience. Persuasion is as much about timing as it is about technique. Sometimes even if you're saying all the right things, the timing might not be right for the person you're trying to persuade. Maybe they're not ready to hear your message, or maybe there are other circumstances in their life that are taking precedence. This is where patience comes in. It's about understanding that people come around at their own pace. Your role is to plant the seed, nurture it with consistent effort, and wait for the right moment. Sometimes a person may not be persuaded immediately, but the conversation you had with them stays in the back of their mind. Weeks, months, or even years later, they may come back to you and say, you know, I've been thinking about what you said. That's the art of planting seeds. You see, in persuasion, there's a time to speak and there's a time to listen. There's a time to present and there's a time to wait. It's not just about getting your point across. It's about knowing when to let your words simmer in someone's mind until they're ready to take action. Next is consistency in character. 
Finally, persuasion isn't just about what you say, it's also about who you are. If you want to be an effective persuader, you must be consistent in your character. People are influenced not just by the words you use, but by the life you live. They watch your actions, your habits, your responses in times of difficulty, and they draw conclusions about whether or not they should follow your lead. So make sure that your actions are in harmony with your words. If you talk about the importance of discipline, then you must practice discipline in your own life. If you speak about the power of positivity, let people see you embody that positivity. When your character aligns with your message, you become not just a speaker of truth, but a living example of it. Mastering the art of persuasion is a journey. It requires commitment, practice, and a sincere desire to understand others and help them grow. It's about using the power of language to connect, to inspire, and to challenge. When done correctly, persuasion isn't about getting someone to do what you want. It's about bringing them to a place where they see value in doing what's right for them. Remember, the greatest persuaders don't force their will on others. They guide, they encourage, and they share the journey. They speak the truth. They tell stories. They challenge and inspire. And above all, they do it with sincerity. If you can master these principles, you'll not only become a great persuader, but you'll also become a person who others want to follow.